while editing this video, I realized some of the footage I took didn't really come out so well, so I had to re-record it. Uh, you'll see me in a different shirt in some of the shots, and that's just why. I apologize ahead of time. This past weekend at the Xbox and Bethesda event, Bethesda Game Studios shed some light on the new game, Starfield. During the presentation, Todd Howard took the stage, looking absolutely marvelous in his signature jacket. Just look at that guy. He loves that jacket. I'm pretty sure he's worn that jacket to every presentation I've ever, at least I've ever seen him in. Even his shoes match the jacket. But I digress. Todd was on stage for about 15 minutes, showing off different aspects of the game, mechanics, story, and other features of Starfield. Let's take a deeper dive into this presentation and see what this game's all about. The footage starts with you landing on the moon of Crete. And right away, we get a great example of the HUD. Right hand side, you can clearly see the health bar, what weapon you have equipped, how many rounds are in that weapon, and how many grenades you have. Nothing groundbreaking for sure, but it does look nice and clean. On the left side you see what looks like a compass, something that is included in most Bethesda games. This one shows what moon or planet you're on, and what looks like an O2 and a CO2 meter. After getting off the ship, we see a weird plant, and then a scan happening of that plant. The scan shows a survey of the, pl of the planet, or in this case Crete is a moon. Uh, it shows the resources, fauna and flora, so, so it looks like you should be able to scan the different resources that you can mine from the planet, the different plants and creatures that you find. I'm hoping that also means that you get to have a more, more or less a journal showing all the different monsters, plants, and different minerals that you find on the different planets. And as you can see during the scan, the compass on the bottom left now reads out some different information. The temperature of the planet, percentage of O2, I'm guessing that might be maybe in the atmosphere and what the gravity is probably compared to Earth. We walk by some creatures, but the character decides to not attack. They look like they're running away. They kind of remind me of mud crabs from uh, Elder Scrolls, to be honest. This scene shows another scan of what looks like the resources and using a laser to mine them. Looks like maybe kind of like No Man's Sky style. We discover a research lab, get some experience for discovering a location, just like every other Bethesda game. When we approach the research lab, we see another ship there. The scan shows that it is one of the Crimson Fleet, with a faction of pirates in the game. We immediately see the character equip their weapon, and then we see our first look at the quick select menu for our favorite weapons, which looks a lot like the Fallout 4 menu. We see some combat here. It looks fairly similar to uh, Fallout 4's combat. Which don't get me wrong, nothing's wrong with Fallout 4's combat, but it could be vastly improved. Next, we come across a case that we need to unlock using a lockpick. In this game, it looks like they're using something called a digipick. Then it has a brand new minigame. I know it's not usually a very exciting thing, but I was super amped to see this. A brand new lockpicking minigame using a little wheel where you, you kind of match up the lines with the empty spots in the circle. I think it's brilliant. It seems pretty simple, but it's, it looks like maybe at more advanced levels, it could get really complex and really difficult. As we can see, the shooting that guy's jetpack made him go flying. I love that feature. And you can see the O2 meter go down when he does that long jump. Next, we see our ship land on the planet of Jemison to the city of New Atlantis. New Atlantis looks like it could be a place on Earth, to be honest. Looks like even in the year 2330, they're smart watchers, but this time they're actually useful. I read an article after the event that had some negative things to say about the NPCs from the game. They wanted to say, these NPCs still look like the characters we've been talking to in Bethesda games since Oblivion. I feel like that's a pretty hot take. I think the Starfield NPCs looked really great, to be honest. I think the writer of the article it probably hasn't played Oblivion in a while. If you go back and play Oblivion, or even Morrowind, um, those NPCs look pretty awful compared to even Skyrim's NPCs. I've lined up some clips of the NPCs speaking from the presentation, just so to give you an idea. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think these NPCs look the same as Oblivion, or do you think that they're better than ever? Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? Agreed to work for UC Sister. The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. The next part of the video brings us to a group called Constellation. They're looking for these artifacts out in space. It looks like when you touch the artifact, you get visions. These artifacts are definitely alien in nature, and it's very clear these are a big part of the main story. 
character creation comes back in a big way with a lot more customizations. First we see what looks like randomly generated characters that you can choose from. And then we see some different attributes like the size and shape of your body, as well as even how you walk. Next we see what they call the background, which looks like a kind of a class system. Here they show us five of the pre-configured classes. First class that we see is Chef. It looks like starting skills are gastronomy, where you can craft specialty food. Next is dueling, which gives you a 10% more damage for melee weapons. And then wellness, which starts you off at 30 more HP. Then we have combat medic. Starting skills are pistol certification, which gives you 10% more damage with pistols. Medicine, which makes med packs heal 10% more. And weightlifting, which looks like it lets you carry 10 kilograms more. I don't remember any previous Bethesda games actually uh, giving a unit to measurement of weight. Um, Skyrim, they're just weight units. Fallout, it doesn't say specifically, even though uh, you guys should pick up like like workout weights. The 80 pound weight weighs 80, but in the menu, it doesn't necessarily say pounds, kilograms, or anything like that. It looks like here they're actually sticking to a unit um, and using kilograms, which makes a lot more sense because of it being bound to the you know space and science and things like that, they'd use a metric system. It'll actually be interesting to see how much weight you can carry in total by default and how much weight things are in the game to see maybe if they're actually accurately weighed in kilograms in real life and in the game. Then we get Cyber Runner, starting skills, pistol certification again, security which ups your initial lock picking ability to do advanced picks. It also gives you two auto attempts, Persuasion, which gives you an increased chance of success in speed challenges. Next we see Cyberneticist. This looks pretty similar to uh, other classes like in Fallout where uh, you have more damage towards robots for like robotics, you get 10% more damage uh, for robots and turrets, uh, more damage, 10% more damage with laser weapons, and then of course uh, Medicine, we get 10% uh, more efficient med packs. The last class they show is Diplomat, which for me really seems like the more the most interesting one. Starting skills for this is Persuasion, which gives you an increased chance of success in speed challenges. Diplomacy, which allows you to uh, stop an NPC temporarily from being aggressive. It looks like someone that has to be uh, below your level. And then Bargaining, which gives you a bonus for uh, purchasing items, buying things for less, selling things for more. And in this particular case, bargaining looks like you buy for ten for five percent less and sell for ten percent more. So it's actually a pretty good starting feature. The last section they show off in character creation is for optional traits. And it looks like all of these traits have a plus in one way and a minus in another. This reminds me of like the wild, crazy wasteland, whatever they call call it from Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas, where uh, wild things happen or like the one where if you're wearing glasses you get plus two for perception if you're not wearing uh, glasses you get minus one for perception kind of thing in this presentation they showed off eight it looks like there's a lot more to choose from but the eight they show include introvert which reminds me a lot of the lone wanderer one from fallout 4 in that particular case you gained more uh, skills for being alone instead of being with a companion um, in this case, it looks like you actually lose skill. So instead of just not having a bonus, you actually get a minus for having other people in your party. I'm hoping that does not include uh, having a companion for like a mission that they require, which would be really annoying to me immediately be uh, just behind on a mission just because they force you to be with somebody. I typically don't have a companion in these games. Uh, New Vegas was the last... Uh, Bethesda RPG where I use companions. I feel like in Skyrim and Fallout 4 companions really just got in the way uh, more than they helped. So this is the kind of uh, trait that I personally would choose. And it also kind of reflects uh, me in real life. <laughs> Kid stuff is an interesting trait. Um, it kind of says you have parents that are alive that you can visit. Um, they have a home that you can go to and talk to them, but I guess 10% of all the money you earn is automatically deducted and sent to them, which is a little strange. I'm not sure why you'd pick this. Neon Street Rats is definitely an interesting choice. Uh, gives you better dialogue options, but a higher bounty if you get caught committing crimes. The dialogue options are probably more worthwhile than, than the negative. 
Raised Universal looks like it starts the game off. You're automatically part of this faction called the Enlightened, where you gain a discount at the church store, uh, but you lose access to Sanctum Universum store. So it looks like these are maybe um, opposite factions, maybe they're rival factions. Serpent's Embrace is definitely a strange one. Uh, it looks like it has to do with one of these religious factions. It provides a boost to your health and endurance when you do a grab jump. Uh, but it looks like if, if you don't do these grab jumps, your endurance and your health are actually lowered uh, until you do it again. It says, looks like it says kind of like an addiction. Um, maybe we'll understand more about this once the game releases and we understand more about um, the Great Serpent religious class. Next trait is Spaced, where it looks like you have an increased uh, health and endurance when you're in space. But it's decreased when you're on the surface of a moon or a planet. It mentions can't be combined with terra firma, which I'm going to guess is the exact opposite, where you have a higher health and endurance when you're on the surface of a moon or a planet, and then it's lowered when you go into space. And oddly enough, the last trait that they show is starter home, uh, where you start the game already owning a home, but having a $50,000 mortgage that you have to pay to the bank looks like they were trying to uh, appeal to the millennials in the audience that uh, can finally own a home. I like to imagine uh, showing that trade-off last is intentional. Um, this current housing market's insane and owning a home has actually become harder than ever, so <laughs> appealing to that, that audience with that trait is definitely a smart move. The next section we see is the skills in the game, which affect how you play. We see at the top uh, the different sections. This probably isn't all of them, but we see physical, social, combat, science, and tech and what it looks like in the presentation gaining levels gives you skill points that you can add more skills and then once you have the skills you can then earn ranks in the skills by actually using them uh, as we see on the screen you have a challenge kill 250 enemies with a ballistics weapon um, sounds like anything that shoots regular bullets once you complete that challenge it looks like then you can rank up the skill which in this particular case it increases it by 30 percent we don't know yet what the individual categories mean or what they are for. I would imagine uh, social is probably the things, communicating, dialogue, things like that. Combat being weapons, um, melee, ballistics, uh, energy weapons, grenades, things like that. Science and tech are probably like the the medicine and the, like lock picking skills. Uh, physical, probably more like hand-to-hand -hand combat and how much you can carry. Ever since Skyrim released, crafting your own weapons and armor has been a thing in pretty much every Bethesda RPG. And that's definitely not changing with Starfield. Here they show us this research laboratory screen, which looks like what you use to create weapons, food, mods for your weapons and armor. Here we see research projects where it shows where required materials you need to complete those mods. Blocked mods are probably ones that are behind a skill that you need to upgrade. Looks like Bethesda is definitely not giving up on Fallout 4 settlement building. Here we see an outpost being created from scratch. From what Todd is saying, you can hire people that will manage that outpost for you. The only thing we need now is an NPC to run around telling you an outpost is in trouble and they need your help. It looks like Bethesda put a lot of time and effort into the shipbuilding aspect of the game. You can buy different parts, sections, and engines, weapons from different manufacturers and combine them in any way that you want. And it looks like you can make any sort of different combination of parts to make a ship. And it looks like with all the different parts that you can add onto your ship, there's going to be plenty of customizable options. And I definitely want to spend as much time as possible building a ship because, tell him Todd. Because yes, you can fly it. Thrusters boosted. Flying the ship is one thing, uh, but the footage they show a space, or actually a few space dog fights, which uh, is pretty awesome to be honest. Exploration seems to be a really big thing about this game. It's my favorite thing about any Bethesda RPG. I love to just go through all of the world and find all the hidden uh, dungeons and, and items, and it looks like this game will be no different. From what Todd's saying, there's over a thousand explorable planets. From what I understand, most are procedurally generated, so they'll probably be boring and just have mountain ranges and items for you to uh, collect like resources and animals to find but um, still I w it's really great to see them using that procedural generation for something really interesting. There were a couple interviews after the presentation um, on Tuesday the 14th they had an interview with Pete Hines which he kind of implied that you could steal 
other people's spaceships, uh, which which is a great idea. I loved uh, collecting the uh, armor suits in Fallout 4, so I'll probably be spending hours playing this game, uh, stealing people's ships, and just having a base with that's just full of other people's spaceships. Todd Howard, in a interview with IGN, did confirm that you won't be able to fly directly from a surface of a planet or a moon, just out right into space, and then back onto a different planet surface. I guess to engineer that kind of thing in the game would have taken years and a lot of money, and they didn't think it was necessary. I kind of agree, um, in a way. I think that would be cool. Very, um, I think that'd be very cool to just be able to leave a planet and go right to the next planet. But it makes a lot of sense to um, to have to put it into the computer because if the planets are that far away, you probably need to program it very realistically anyway. I'll be making more of these deep dive videos as video game announcements come throughout the month of June. If you're interested in seeing more, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. If you liked what you saw in the video, please hit that like button. It's completely free for you and it really does help the channel. That's pretty much everything that was in the presentation, but if, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. Hopefully we'll hear more in the months coming uh, before the game releases and hopefully soon we will hear a more concrete release date for Starfield. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>